Hello, and welcome to the Freddie Mac Connect, Grow Your Pool of Borrowers, a deep dive into Home Possible and HFA Advantage session. Audience members are in listen-only mode. This session is being recorded and will be available following the conference. To submit a question, please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. If you experience any technical issues, please use the Q&A box and someone will assist you. Lastly, you will find icons at the bottom of your screen with links to the speaker bios and the presentation deck. With that, I will turn it over to Single Family Affordable Lending Manager, Nora Guerra. Nora, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Kiara. Now I present my colleague and co-presenter, Jim Peranto. Jim is an origination training manager in the Client Education Services team. Today's agenda, we will cover the State of the Housing Overview, Home Possible and HFA Advantage Overview, Loan Product Advisor Impacts, Borrower Eligibility, Source of Funds, Home Possible Income and Property Eligibility Tool. And with that, let's start with the State of the Housing Overview. Now, as you can see through this slide, it really represents some historical numbers. In 2021, due to the low interest rate market, we had historical $4.8 trillion of annual single family origination. This is in trillions. Now, what is important to note is that in 2022, we started to see a little bit, little bit of the market uh, constrict, and that was due to interest rates. And a lot of borrowers had actually taken advantage of refinances. Now, 2023 forecasts, we're seeing purchase business really be the focus. And a lot of you I know are starting to prepare your business plans and really start, starting to strategize. How are you going to help grow your business and really impact these millennials that are coming to the housing table? Because this is truly the demand. It's these millennials. Now, what what I want to share with you on this next slide is the household demographics. What are we really seeing? Well, as you can see, 127.6 million total household number of households um, in 2022 in the first quarter. Now, that really is a huge uptick. In 2013, as a housing industry, we were high-fiving each other and saying, fantastic job, we're finally out of the 2009 mortgage crisis. We created 678 thousand household formations. Um, something else to note, baby boomer household uh, holders, we have an uptick of $2.8 million year over year between 2011 and 2021. Now, home sales have increased 8.5% in 2021 compared to 2020. That demand is really showing in this uptick. 65 plus householders, uh, we're seeing an increase of 10 million year over year between 2011 and 2021. And younger millennials, 25 to 34, we're gonna see an increase of 1.3 million year over year between 2011 and 2021. That really is the footprint of your future business. Now let's talk about one of the bigger challenges and something to note, it didn't happen because of the pandemic. It really started from the 2009 housing crisis. We have not been building enough homes to really catch up with demand. Now this slide really represents, now if we just want to catch up with demand, how much inventory will we need? Well, 3.4 million. If we want to get a quantifiable number on the low side, 1.7 million. And if we want to have a little excess of inventory, you know, catch up with demand and have a bit of excess for those next gen Zers coming to the housing table, 4.7 million. Having a lack of inventory has really just increased um, housing appreciation. It's really increased uh, sales prices across the country. Also, something to note is lack of inventory is also due to lack of manpower, the cost of lumber, and uh, access to lumber. COVID really impacted that as well. Now, let's talk about housing appreciation. Um, in a six month, uh, this uh, slide represents six months worth of housing appreciation. On a national average, we're about at 17%. 
Now, I do tell some of these millennials, if you're really looking to for a return of your investment, look at a 17% return of investment average. That really kind of gets them excited to have the conversation about housing appreciation being a great return of investment. Now, let's also talk about some of these darker, bluer states that represent an aggressive um, housing appreciation, such as Arizona at 27%, Utah, I'm sorry, uh, Montana, Florida, North Carolina, and Tennessee. We're seeing a huge increase of first time home buyers purchasing in these states. Now, this may be attributed to a lot of migration. Migration is really happening due to remote work and a lot of these millennials looking for states where there is housing and affordability. So inventory and affordability is really important to them. Now, let's move over. A lot of times, a lot of these millennials and our housing industry professionals mention, you know, do we see millennial first time home buyers? Well, we actually do. And it really started with that uptick in 2020. I feel that the low interest rate market and COVID impacted this. A lot of these millennials were sitting on the housing table saying, should I buy or should I wait? You know, what is happening? You know, what are the interest rates? Is this a good time to buy? Well, guess what? COVID happened and a lot of these millennials were sheltered in place in these urban studios that they were sharing with their roommates and they just said no way this is not sustainable i should get pre-qualified and i should see if i qualify for a home so a lot of them did as you can see here we've got 50 in 2020 52 percent about 52 percent of our uh millennial home buyers represented more than half the purchase mortgages in 2020 and this are really um purchase mortgages issue to millennials acquired by Freddie Mac. So millennials are definitely here. With that, I turn it over to my colleague, Jim Peranto, who's going to be discussing Home Possible and HFA Advantage Overview. Jim, over to you. Well, Nora, thank you so much and fantastic job. And I do have to say, I love this presentation because you come in and you talk about the current market and you talk about some of the challenges and opportunities that there are. And I get to come right behind you and talk about the solution. Now, today I'm going to give you guys two different solutions here. The first one is going to be Home Possible and the second one is going to be that HFA Advantage. Now, they're very similar, these products, and, and oftentimes they get compared to each other. And we like to say that um, HFA Advantage really gets its DNA from Home Possible. So I want to start off today really giving you guys what's, what's similar about them and the differences between these two. And that's what we're going to do on my first slide here. So you guys, when you look at the middle section here, you'll see that's what Home Possible and HFA have, have in common. Then we're going to explore what what uh, is unique to Home Possible on the left-hand side of the screen, and then we'll look at HFA Advantage on the right-hand side of the screen. The first thing I want to point out to you guys is 97% loan to value. This right away, when you guys talk to your borrowers, there's still a mis misconception out there that borrowers need 20% down or 10% or 5% down. That's just not true. And that's why we want to help educate you guys so you can ed educate borrowers about the options out there. They can put 3% down and get into a home today. Now with that, you're gonna see that you can do 105% TLTV with an affordable second. You might be asking yourself the question, if you're not familiar, what's an affordable second? Don't worry, I'm gonna go over it later in the session. I'm gonna tell you guys what an affordable second is, and I'll give you guys some resources where you guys can learn some more after today's session. The next thing you're gonna see on there is the MI is cancelable. And you'll hear me talk about MI in a couple of slides here just because it really is important. It's one of the best features that, that Home Possible and HFA uh, Advantage have in common. This MI is cancelable. Oftentimes when people think about low down payment options, they think about other things in the marketplace that have um, mortgage insurance that's not cancelable. It's not the case here. And this is a big advantage. That's one of the big advantages that you guys are gonna see. Another misconception. Now, when I talk to clients, well, they often talk about how uh, Home Possible or HFA Advantage, they think of it as a first time home buyer product. And I get it. This is a fantastic product for first time home buyers. But the concept I want you guys to have is it's not just for first time home buyers. So if you have a repeat buyer or even someone that owns another property, that can be acceptable as long as our mortgage, or excuse me, for our property, it's the primary residence. So keep that in mind to make sure you're not excluding borrowers that would qualify for one of these offerings. 
you're also going to see that there's flexible sources of funds. And we have limited time here today. I'm going to go over some of those flexible sources of funds and I'll, I'll give you guys some details on some of them. But the takeaway I have for you guys is just know there's a lot of stuff that's available for borrowers as far as funds that's available for Home Possible and HFA Advantage. As far as property types, two to four unit properties are acceptable along with manufactured homes. So if you have manufactured homes in your lending footprint, these are both going to be great, great options for them. The last thing on my list you're going to see at the bottom there is non-occupying coal bars are allowed. What does that mean? Well, if you have a situation where mom, dad, grandma, grandpa have to co-sign on the loan, it is allowed with these. I'll go into greater detail later in the session and tell you guys some details about that specific guidelines. So as you guys can see, there's a lot in common with these two offerings. Let's talk about the differences. So I want you guys to move your focus to the left-hand side of the screen, and you're going to see in the left-hand side of the screen, this is going to be what's specific to home possible. The first thing I want to start off with is the area median income limits. And this is one of the things that's one of the main features that you have to be aware of, be aware of with home possible. You're going to see, we want you guys to take the bar's annual income. So their, their monthly income and you want to take it as an annual figure. And then you're going to compare that to the area median income for the properties located. We want to make sure that our bar's annual income is at or below the 80% limit for the area median income. I'm going to show you guys two ways during today's session to, to find that area median income. So if you're, if you're at the spot where you're like, I'm just not sure what that is or where to find it, I will show you that throughout today's session. The second thing you're going to see on the left-hand side is it's only for qualifying income. And this, I got to tell you guys, this is a big deal. So this is not whole household income. We're only look, using the income that they're, or excuse me, we're only going to use the income that they're using for debt ratio purposes for that AMI calculation. Let me just take one quick moment and break, break this down because this to me is an aha moment based on some, some clients I've talked to in the past. If you have two borrowers on the loan and let's say borrower A and borrower B, and you only need to use income from borrower A for debt ratio purposes, that's what you would use for AMI limits. So if you're not going to use any income from borrower B, you don't have to use it for AMI limits. And also, if you have one borrower that has to say that they've got a, a W-2 job and they've got a second job, and if you're not qualifying the second job as far as debt ratio purposes, we're not going to force you to use it for the AMI limits. All right, guys, so that's a really important takeaway here. For the AMI limits for Home Possible, it's only going to be qualifying income. The third bullet point on the left-hand side is going to be MI. And this is going to be something I'm going to go into depth in this in just a couple of slides. I got a specific slide, but just a takeaway is that home possible that MI requirement at the highest LTVs is going to be less than the standard MI. So that, that itself is a big advantage. All right. So that's home possible on the left. I want to move your attention to the right hand side of the screen. And in that right hand, right hand side of the screen, you guys are see HFA advantage. The first thing I want to point out to you guys is you have to partner with a participating housing finance agency. So keep that in mind. That HFA is going to set their income limits. So I talked to you guys on the left-hand side about the qualifying income for home possible. Please defer to the HFA income limits for that specific limits. They're going to set up their own down payment assistance program. So DPA, so refer to them because they could offer that DPA. MI as well is going to be less here. And I'm going to go into in detail and I do a side by side by side for you. But just know one of the big benefits is the MI for HFA Advantage is going to be less than the standard as well. The last thing I have on that list for you is homeownership education and counseling. That HFA is going to set their specific requirements for that homeownership education and counseling. And if you're at a spot where you're like, I'm just not sure what that is. Don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly what that is and where you can learn more later in the session. All right, guys, so this is a, a high level overview of what they have in common and the differences between Home Possible and HFA Advantage. Now, I do want to uh, move on to the next slide here, and I really want to talk to you guys about something that I started with, and that's those LTV requirements. So this page has a chart with our LTV requirements. It's going to go over the LTV, TLTV, and HLTV requirements. 
Now at the top of this chart, the first thing you're going to see is that this is for a purchase transaction. And this is also for no cash out refinance. Unfortunately, if you have a bar that's looking to do a cash out refinance, these two offerings are not going to be the right fit for them. Cash out refinances are not allowed. What we've done is we've broken on the screen two different grids. The top grid is going to have for fixed rate mortgages. And as I said, I want you guys to look at under one unit. You can go all the way up to 97% loan to value. As I said, 3% down, that's, going to, that's what's going to help get people in the homes today. Now, with the options all the way down the screen, you can see 105% TLTV is acceptable with that affordable second. And don't worry, guys, I'm still going to go over in detail what that affordable second is and show you guys where you can learn more in just a little bit. So we've broken it down. The top section is going to be for fixed rate. The bottom section, we do have arms that are available. But I do want to point out to you guys, the LTV is a little bit lower here. So for a one-unit resident, it's going to be 95%. Two units going to be 95%. And a three to four units going to be a 75% loan to value ratio with if they're util utilizing an arm. On the right hand side of the screen, that column is going to be for super conforming mortgages. With these offerings, you, or with, with the offering, you can pair this up with a super conforming mortgage, but just know it does have to go through Loan Product Advisor and it does require a Loan Product Advisor risk class of accept. So keep that in mind. And as you guys can see, there's a little bit more modest LTB requirements if you are using a super conforming mortgage. All right, guys. So this is something that gets me really excited, these high LTV ratios. But as I said, I want to move on to my next point here, and that was going to be the MI requirements. In the first page, I give you guys a little bit of detail, but it's really so important. I want to do a side by side. It's going to be a side by side by side here on this page and really explore the differences between our standard MI requirements and what we're offering you with either HFA Advantage or Home Possible. So if you look at our three columns, on the left-hand side is our HFA Advantage when that AMI limit is at or below 80% LTV, excuse me, 80% AMI. The mi middle section is going to be where that AMI, uh, uh, AMI is above 80%. Home possible, we already talked about this. They're all going to be at or below 80% uh, AMI limits, and that's going to be on the right-hand side. Now, as you guys are looking at this grid, I really want to draw your attention to the bottom row, and that's going to be where the LTV is above 95%, equal to or less than 97%. And this is really, honestly, where a lot of these loans are. These are mostly really high, high LTV ratio loans. The middle column for the AMI limit that's above 80%, AMI, the AMI is above 80%, is also going to be our standard guide offering. So when you compare those side by side by side, you're going to see for HFA Advantage, when the AMI limit's up at or below 80%, we only require 18%. The middle column is going to be our standard requirement, which is going to be 35%. On the right-hand side for you guys, I've got Home Possible, which is going to be 25%. This alone is, a, is enough reason to get you guys excited about these offerings and what, what they can do for your borrowers. Now, right now, I'm going to ask you guys to, to take your attention and move it up one row. So where there's above 90% 90 equal to 95%. With this row, on the left-hand side, you're going to see it's 16%. Our standard guide's 30%. And Home Possible is going to be 25%. So your borrower is still saving is saving compared to that standard MI requirements. I alluded to this earlier as well, but oftentimes people look at low down payment options in the marketplace, and some of them have mortgage insurance that's for the life of the loan. We don't have this. This MI is cancelable, which is another benefit I want to make sure you guys are walking away with here today. Another point that I talked about on the first page that I want to circle back to I'm, we're going to talk about it in a second, sorry, is going to be um, non owner occupant uh, borrowers. But before I get to that, I've gone through a few different sections here, and I want to uh, you know, pause for a second and let you guys know this is going to be very easy to underwrite, very easy to process. So based on all the stuff I've talked to you guys about the AMI limits, 
All you guys need to do, and this is the first way I want you guys to think about it, is submit it to Loan Product Advisor. So for us, it's free to use Loan Product Advisor and free to run it. All you need to do is select the offering identifier. And we're talking about two offerings here. So you can see on the screen, you can choose Home Possible or HFA Advantage. And when you select it, you run your feedback certificate. Guys, it's that easy. You look at the feedback certificate I have for you guys on the pay, on the um, uh, screen for you guys here. And right here under the offering identifiers, it's going to tell you guys this was run as a home possible mortgage. And if it was uh, HFA Advantage, it'll let you know that as well. Couldn't get any easier. So you get your, your answer within seconds to make sure that you ran it as a home possible. And then I want you guys to look at the feedback certificate. It's as easy as reading your feedback certificate to see what the messages set, say. So you're going to look under the affordable lending and access to messages, uh, access to um, credit messages. On the screen here, I've highlighted it for you. These messages are going to do that AMI calculation for you. So if, if this was new to you guys and you're worried about doing that calculation, please don't worry. All I want you guys to do is run your feedback certificate and then read the messages. And I'm going to pause for one second because I just want to make sure that you guys see what one of these messages is. So for an example here, the first message says the qualifying income is 51600 The AMI limit is 65600 And it has to be at or below 52480 If you look at the messages right underneath that, it's going to give you the thumbs up saying it qualifies for home possible. You're done. It's that easy. There's nothing else for you guys to do. Our system has already made sure that it meets our AMI limits. Now, I want to show you guys as well, because we're talking about two different offerings, what the message looks like for um, an HFA Advantage. You will get feedback messages as well with HFA Advantage. These feedback me messages are going to tell you what the uh, AMI limit is for 80%, and then it's going to direct you to make sure it meets the AMI limits for that specific HFA. So as I said earlier, that HFA is going to set the income limits. So please make sure you review their income limits to make sure they meet the requirements. Requirements. All right, folks. So we've gone through a few different things here. And hopefully looking at that loan product advisor is going to show you guys how easy this really is. Now, I want to move on here and talk about some borrower eligibility requirements. And the first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about, and I talked about it earlier, is the homeownership education and counseling requirements. If you have a situation where with, with Home Possible specifically, all occupying borrowers are first-time home buyers, meaning, and let me define that for everybody. So a first-time home buyer is somebody that hasn't had uh, ownership of residential property in the last three years. So if all of your borrowers are first-time home buyers, at least one occupying borrower must take a home ownership education program. If it's a two to four unit property, at least one bar and it's a purchase. Let me just define that. It's also a purchase. At least one person has to take the landlord education program. Oftentimes you get asked, well, what standards do you need to meet? It's the national industry standards for home ownership education and counseling. We want to make sure it meets those requirements. Additionally, you're going to see a pop-up here that it can't be offered by an interested party to the transaction, including the, the lender or seller. Now, there's a couple different places that you guys can get this information. Um, one of them I really want to point out to you guys is ours. So we actually have a free, free, free home, 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 uh, home education and counseling service. This is our Credit Smart. This is fantastic, and this is going to provide financial knowledge, skills, behaviors, habits, and confidence for borrowers. Um, I absolutely love this. It's available. Uh, it's an online course, and your borrower can do this at their convenience. One thing I want to point out, I'm giving you guys this information, but this is really going to be specific for Home Possible because I, I do recognize, folks, we are talking about two different offerings here. With your HFAs, as I said in the beginning, they are going to set their own specific home ownership education and counseling requirements. So if you guys are working with an HFA or partnering with an HFA, please reach out to them and find out their specific requirements for home ownership education and counseling. When you look at our Credit Smart Home Buyer U, 
we've made it really convenient for our borrowers. It's available in English and Spanish. We have customer support. That borrower can do it on their phone, their tablet, their computer, and it's it works with several different browsers out there. When it comes to this, all they're going to do is go in there, take the lessons. When they're done, they're going to get a printout or they could send you a printout or, or PDF. We want to make sure that you guys print this out or put the PDF in file prior to the note date. And what's really what, what's really fantastic about this, it doesn't matter where your borrower is in the journey. So if your borrower is just starting to shop for a house or maybe your borrower is currently a homeowner, either way, this is going to help that borrower with their financial education. Now, I want to invite, invite Nora back on because, Nora, you and I were having a conversation recently about how home um, housing counselors are using this and then really the impact that this has had for borrowers. Can you come back on and talk to us about this for, for just a minute? Yeah, Jim, thank you so much. You know, I recently returned uh, from some presentations across the country. And interestingly enough, I was presenting with, you know, some HFAs and uh, HUD counselors. And when it came to presenting the slide, they shared with me that, you know, it's such a fantastic resource, especially because it's in two languages and it's free. Um, we're not just in the housing industry. We're not just, you know, really uh, working towards financial literacy and financial education to get potential first time home buyers in the home, but we want to keep them in the home. Sustainability is also, you know, very important and impactful. And I think Credit Smart Home Buyer U does a fantastic job on the education. You know, getting great feedback from our industry partners is important. So thank you for bringing me on. I think it's really important that we, you know, continue the conversation and uh, share this resource. I think it's a phenom phenomenal resource. Yes. You, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Nora, for, for coming on here. Um, and I do want to let you guys know, we do have at, at Connect, we do have a lot of resources. So in the next couple of days, please go to our exhibit. So if I want you guys to schedule some time to go to the Credit Smart Lounge, we do have an exhibit if you guys are looking to learn more for this. So I really encourage you guys to do it because like Nora said, there's, it's helping a lot of borrowers out there across the country. One of the things I talked about earlier that I want to focus in on is going to be that non-occupying co-borrower. So for those, for some of you guys, this is going to be where the example I used, maybe mom or dad or grandma, and grandpa want to, want to co-sign and come on the loan. This is eligible and we get these questions all the time. So I just want to focus to make sure this could be the difference between getting your borrower into a home today as well. So with the non-occupying borrower, it is for a one unit residence. And one borrower does have to live in the property as a primary resident. So keep that in mind. This is not a second home investment property situation. One borrower is going to live in the property as a primary primary residence. We do require a little bit more modest with the LTV requirements here. So you're going to see with a, a non-occupying co-borrower, the LTV requirement is going to be 95%. It does have to go through Loan Product Advisor, and it also does need to get that accept risk class. However, with this, you can still go to 105% TLTV with that affordable second. The nice thing about this is the money can come from the occupying bar as far as down payment or the non-occupying bar. So mom, dad, grandma, grandpa can come on the loan and they can provide all the money for the down payment. One of the questions we get frequently around this is, well, what about the AMI limits? We talked earlier about the AMI limits. Well, for Home Possible, as a reminder, folks, we're looking at qualifying income. So let's say that mom and dad decide to come on the loan. If you're using their income for debt ratio purposes, like we talked about earlier, then yes, you'll have to include that income as well in the AMI calculation. But if they're on the loan and you're not using their income for home possible, we're not going to have to use their income for AMI limit purposes. So keep, so keep that in mind as you're thinking about that. Now, mm -hmm. our other offer, the, the HFA Advantage, again, I would encourage you guys reach out to your partner to see how they're going to look at that, that qualifying income. I mentioned in the beginning as well, the flexible sources of funds. 
Now, I wish I had you guys for long, for, for more time here. We can go a deep dive into these assets and we at Freddie Mac have resources if you guys want to come back and continue the learning journey. But for today, I just want to focus on a few different things as far as what's available. Now, as you go through this, there's so many, there's so many um, funds that are acceptable here. We, we had to put it on four different pages. There's that many assets that are, that are acceptable. The first one I'm going to point out to you guys is going to be borrow personal funds. So I encourage you guys to read through this, this page. There's a lot of things that are available. Um, does anything stand out to you guys? Ho hopefully, uh, if you're looking at it, I put it in red. So I try to make it as front and center as possible. And that's going to be cash on hand. Cash on hand is unique to home possible. And so we'll talk about that and give you guys a little bit more detail about that in just a little bit. I've had some some clients I've talked to in the past. They've chosen to go with Home Possible solely because of this. So we'll talk about what it is in just a second here. The second page of Borrow Personal Funds is right here. And as you guys see, this is a lot of information available and a lot of a lot of asset sources available for your borrowers. Now I've gone through two pages of Borrow Personal Funds. The concept I want you guys to have with this. If you have a borrower that has a property that's a two to four unit property and your LTV requirements are at or above 80% loan to value, we do require that 3% come from borrow personal funds that I just showed you. And I just want to say that again to make sure if you have a borrower with a two to four unit property, the LTV requirements are at or above 80% loan to value. 3% has to come from bar personal funds. Everything else can come from any of the asset sources we're talking about here, as long as they're acceptable. All right. So, so keep that in mind. So that's bar personal funds. Let me move on to the next one, which is going to be other sources of funds. And here with other sources of funds, you guys can see that a lot more stuff is available. You've got gifts or gift of equity. Uh, we also have, are calling out wedding gifts. Graduation gifts are acceptable as well. It could be a gift or grant from an agency um, or the gift or grant from the seller as originally a lender. What I have highlighted for you guys right here, and you've heard me mention a few different times, is the affordable seconds. This is something that is fantastic, and we're going to show you guys what it is and where to learn more in just a couple slides here. Continuing the other sources of funds here on this page, you guys can see there's just a lot more options that are available for your clients. I'm going to specifically call out what's in red here, which is the sweat equity, because this is another thing that's unique to these offerings. We're going to explore this in just a second. And I want to point out to you guys, it's the same flexible sources of funds as far as financing concessions that you that on any, on any other specific conventional loan. All right, guys, let's focus in our attention now on the things that are a little bit unique for these offering offerings and cash on hand is one of them. When we're talking about cash on hand, this is really for an unbanked borrower. Somebody that's not a traditional user of credit or they don't typically use checking savings or other uh, similar, similar accounts from financial institutions. We wanna look at their credit and we wanna make sure there's no more than three trade lines we also want three month statements to go over any kind of revol open revolving accounts. Um, with that, if there is any cash advances, they have to be explained and documented. And on the bottom of the screen, you're going to see that we want to uh, pull a credit report uh, about a week prior to closing. And I say pull a credit report. It can be a soft pull. It doesn't have to be a hard pull. So when you're thinking about or you're looking at all the things I have here on the page, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that this is money that they have saved as far as cash and not coming from one of their credit sources. We also, if they've been paying uh, cash for their bar, cash for their bills for the last, you know, six months, they're going to have some receipts. So for someone that pays uh, cash for, let's say, uh, utilities, cell phone, rent, they'll have cash receipts for all those th um, for the last six months. We also want, uh, to, you guys can use our, our Exhibit 23, which is our monthly uh, budget and residual income analysis, or if you guys have a similar form, we'll accept that as well. 
that's going to help us determine that it's reasonable that the bar the bar at this income and these bills was able to save the cash over mm -hmm. over that period of time. The last thing I, you're going to see on the screen, and guys, this this to me is the most important. If you've been around the industry long enough, you've heard the scenario where that bar walks in with a coffee can full of cash and just dumps it on the table and says, "Give me the house." We don't want that to happen. We want our transaction to happen smoothly. So that bar does have to deposit the cash into either a financial institution or an escrow account ahead of time. So keep that in mind. That is our cash on hand. The next one that I talk, want to talk to you guys about is going to be that sweat equity. Sweat equity is perfect if you have the right bar to match it up with. So if you have a borrower that's really handy, they can use their labor or furnished materials in lieu of a cash, uh, using cash for a down payment. You really have to have the right bar in the right situation, but this is a great situ or this is a great option to get a bar into a home today if your bar does have the skills. So maybe you're working with someone right now and you're just trying to figure out a solution. And if, if they're handy and they can make some repairs to the property ahead of time, this is a great option for them that they can use. Now to learn more about this, I've got a job aid link on, this, on the left-hand side of the screen. And on the right-hand side of the screen, we've got a link to a short video. The last one I called out for you guys is gonna be that affordable seconds. Affordable seconds, they go by a, a couple different names in the marketplace. Some people call them soft seconds, forgivable loans, community, community lender, um, community loans. They go by different names, but what they have in common is they have really great terms for your borrower. So for example, they may say, uh, if your borrower lives in the property for five years, the loan's forgivable, or maybe it's interest only payments for the you know X amount, uh, X amount of first years. When you're looking at this, these have fantastic terms. Again, I'm going to say this again, to help get your borrowers in, into the, the house today. We have a web page, and I've got that on the, a picture of our web page on the screen for you. I also have a link to that web page. And we have a resource that's our affordable, um, excuse me, our affordable uh, second checklist. What this is, is this is a convenient checklist. So if you go here, it's a one pager, and if you go, if you have something that you want to see if it's going to qualify for a Freddie Mac, you go there, you you hit all the bus, buttons, you check off it, or uh, click all the check marks, and if you can answer yes to all the questions, you know it's going to be an acceptable, affordable second for Freddie Mac. All right, folks, we've given you guys a lot of information here. The next section here is really going to just focus in on Home Possible here for a second. And this is going to be our home possible income and property eligibility tool. I absolutely love this. And to me, this is just un underutilized and what it can do for you and your clients. I've got a link here on the screen for you. And if you guys haven't been here before, please bookmark this. And I want you to spend your time here today with us with Connect. But after the session ends, please come back and, and uh, just play with the tool and see what it can do for you and your clients. All you're going to do is you're going to click right there and it's going to take you to our web page. Now, once you're there, you can type in an address. Um, if it's a bar address or type in your address, just to try it out. I want you guys to be familiar with this tool and how it works. Once you type in an address, you're going to see a pop-up that specifically calls out that address. It's going to tell you the AMI limits for the property. It's going to show you the 80% AMI limits as well. This is fantastic because I told you guys earlier, hey, if you have a bar at the, at the spot where they're applying for a loan and they own a house, fantastic. Use, use Loan Product Advisor. Not everybody's at that situation. Maybe you've got a bar that's still shopping and you can't, ta can't take advantage of that Loan Product Advisor feedback uh, certificate. You can still utilize this, this tool itself. One more thing I want to point out here, here for you guys. You guys heard me talk about... Um, the, those affordable seconds. If you're looking for down payment assistance, you click right here, fill out about five to seven questions. And what you're going to see is a pop-up that'll give you a ton of down payment assistance in that area. That's a great opportunity to provide your borrower so that they can find some affordable money. All right. I want to invite Nora back on here because Nora, again, you and I have had a lot of conversations recently, especially about this home possible income and property eligibility tool. Do you want to talk about the impact and how people are using this tool? Yeah, Jim, 
interestingly enough, more potential first time home buyers are utilizing this tool than housing industry professionals. Now, how are they utilizing this tool? Well, what they're doing is grabbing the MLS listings that their agents are sending them and dropping it into that toolbar that you see there. And what they're doing is they're searching for properties that are eligible for home possible. And they're going into, as you could see, that red uh, box that shows down payment assistance uh, uh, tool. And what they're doing is reaching back out to their agents and saying, yeah, this property is definitely qualifies for home possible. Let's go and check it out. Now, I think that this is a phenomenal way for you to grow your business. Uh, two ways. Number one, definitely introduce it to your first time home, potential first time home buyer clients, you know, show it to them. This is another really great way to keep them engaged and keep the conversation with them. And your competitor, they're not going to leave you because your competitor isn't utilizing this tool. Number two, I think it's also a fantastic way for you to engage your agents and have valuable conversations. If they are uh, listing or having a showing at a property that is home possible eligible, you can utilize this tool and uh, partner with them and show, you know, potential first time home buyers that show up to the listing um, and, you know, show them what they qualify for. I think it's a really great way to kind of just set yourself apart from your competitor. Jim, back to you. Well, I appreciate it, Nora. I wish I had you guys all day here, but we unfortunately are near the end of our session. I've seen a lot of stuff come through in the chat box here today. So um, Kira, can you come back on and, and see what questions we have? Thank you so much, Jim. Um, again, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to submit your questions. If your question does not get answered during this session, we will follow up with you following the conference. Um, with that, let's get to our first question. Let's see here. Can my mortgage loan officer start originating these products today? Is there anything we need to do? Um, no, I'll take that first one. So for Home Possible, no. You guys are all set. Uh, please do. I'm glad you guys are excited. Please do take advantage of it today. With HFA, you will have to find that HFA you're partnering with and reach out to your Freddie Mac representative. So there might be a little bit there if you guys don't have that in place yet. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Nora, this next one's for you. Why have millennials been so hesitant to purchase a home and what can we do to engage them to grow our business? Oh, great question, Kira. Um, what's interesting is because these older millennials went through the 2009 mortgage crisis and saw their parents lose their homes, get into modifications, they didn't quite understand. They were very hesitant for such a very long time. However, I think we've done such a great job as a housing industry to kind of educate these millennials that we no longer have those programs and we now qualify to the full extent of the credit box. Now, let's also talk about dispelling some myth for millennials. How do you grow your business? Um, it, interestingly enough, a lot of these millennials are highly educated. They hold higher learning degrees, and we know through their student loan debt conversations, um, you know, they're highly educated, yet they are lacking in financial literacy. A great way for you to engage with them and really just teach them the benefits of home ownership is by hosting home buyer fairs. Grab your favorite agent, start promoting it, you know, host financial literacy events. Also, dispel the myth. Yeah, they can get into a home, as Jim mentioned, for as low as 3% down and in some cases with possible down payment assistance. It'll bring them to the housing table much sooner than them just waiting on the sidelines and hoping that we're going to have another low refinance, um, a low interest rate market. Um, this is a really great way for you to educate, you know, engage and continue the conversation. Kiara, back to you. Thank you so much, Nora. Um, our next question, I heard that LPA has a message to let you know that the loan can, could be eligible, even if the offering identifier isn't selected. Is this correct? Yeah, absolutely. If, I wish I had you guys all day and we could go through it, but you guys will see, even if you're not thinking about Home Possible up front, we are thinking about it for you. And so your loan product advisor will analyze your, any kind of con conventional mortgage, it's, um, let me rephrase that, any conventional mortgage submitted to the loan product advisor, and it'll tell you in the messages. 
So, and I've talked to so many people and this has been a big impact where, you know, you may have some people that qualify for home possible and you're just not aware of it. So again, please read that feedback certificate and check those messages because that can help you guys shift some people from a regular conventional loan to a home possible mortgage. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jim. Well, that is all the time we have for questions today. I would like to thank our speakers for joining us. If we did not get to your questions, someone will follow up with you after the conference. Your opinion is important. Please take a few moments to take our brief survey so that we can continue to bring you timely and relevant content. You can also log in anytime after the conference to play back any session presented today. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference.